Hello, everyone. Welcome to Industry Focus Financials Edition. Happy Hanukkah, joyous Kwanzaa, Merry Christmas, Happy Festivus, season's greetings for anyone I might have missed. We've got John Maxfield on the phone. We've also got Robert Brokamp, CFP. I was told to really emphasize that part. Um, He is the lead advisor of the Motley Fool's Rule Your Retirement newsletter and is a regular contributor to Motley Fool Answers, which is one of our sister podcasts. And we also have Michael Douglas, who used to be on this show, and then he abandoned it, but we're really happy to have him back. (laughs) Thanks, Gabby. Great, great intro there. That that means either you were too good to be on it or... Way too bad. (laughs) (laughs) I'll I'll, I'll let our listeners decide uh, whether they've missed the... Um, Soothing sounds of Michael Douglas. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, so today we've got a, a special holiday episode. We thought that we'd help any procrastinating gift givers out there by sharing our favorite investing and or business books. Um, in my family, everyone gets three Christmas presents every year. You get a book, some form of outerwear, because everyone's really worried that I'm cold all the time, I guess, and a chocolate orange. Um, so that is three free gift ideas for everyone for the price of one free podcast. Uh, last I'll just add that my yeah. family does the same thing in terms of the book and the outerwear. PJs every Christmas Eve, so we're in line on that one. There you go. My family actually does chocolate oranges, so. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> we just need to combine our families and we'll be as good as hers, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> if all <if, if> mine. <laughs> wow, I guess you guys are invited over for Christmas now because I feel bad. <laughs> um, Actually, last year I got a romance novel, and in the interest of not getting another one, I'm hoping you all will sway my mother into buying one of your favorite books for me for Christmas. <laughs> got it. So you have to be as charming and convincing as possible. So, And we know Gabby's mother is listening. She is our most dedicated listener, besides my mother. She listens to all of them, and she'll, she'll tell me whether or not she thinks they're good every week. So. <laughs> My, Ga- my, Gabby's mom, you should be very proud, by the way. Aww. For what it's worth. I, I agree, I agree. For, for what <laughs> it's worth, my so mother nice. um, my mother uh, called me, and I didn't pick up the other day, so she promptly called the full uh, HQ front desk, um, and I got an email <laughs> saying, your, your mother just called for me. <laughs> so, so, Mom, if you're listening, I, I, I love you, too. Oh, uh, <laughs> this is a very nice episode already, guys. Um, Maxfield, do you want to start? Yeah, absolutely. So... So first of all, I love this episode. I, as readers probably know I'm obsessed with reading, and, it, and it probably, that probably goes to explain if my wife is listening, which you know I love my wife too. So just to throw some <laughs> nice words on my own part, <laughs> so I don't today. sound like the Grinch this year, you know. Um, <laughs> so the the question is is when you're picking a book for investing, right? What are you looking for? And you're looking. What I'm looking for is something that will change how I think about companies or you know, the economy or something in that regard that will make me actually a tangibly better investor. And the book that, the most recent book that has done this for me, and when I think about you know, like a big change, I mean, it has really tangibly changed how I think about business. It is called The Outsiders uh, by a man named William Thorndike Jr. And basically this book, it, it traces eight different CEOs over, who over the years have achieved these just absurdly ridiculous returns. Henry Singleton, who is the, who's the main person he talks about at the very beginning, it's, it's kind of the story he wraps around Henry Singleton, and then he, he brings seven other unconventional CEOs into, into the equation. If you had invested a single dollar with Henry Singleton when he took over Teledyne, or when he started the company Teledyne in 1961, when he retired, in 1990, which was, mind you, in the midst of a very severe recession, that single dollar would be worth $180. And over, over that 30-year stretch, he, re- he returned 20.4% on a compound annual basis. And just to put that into context, Warren Buffett, who is like, right, the best investor of all time, has returned 22.3%. Uh, on a compound annual basis over his 36 years. So he's basically right, right up there with Buffett. And the question is, how, does some, how did somebody like Henry Singleton achieve this? And the, you know, the, the, the title of the book, The Outsiders, kind of gives it away. These guys are not your Jack Welches, who are your real famous CEOs, who are known to be particularly good operators. These CEOs were exceptional at capital allocation. And what that means is that Look, you have Jack Welch and these, uh, these other just fantastic CEOs who are able to, to help their companies earn a lot of money. But then the question is, what do you do with that money? 
and what and when and in, in determining what you do with that money, how big of an impact can that have on your returns? And what they found is that Henry Singleton, over the years, and 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 just and Teledyne was a conglomerate, so he would buy other companies with his high price stock, and they had low price stock, so he'd arbitrage in that way. But over the years, he bought back after so in the 1960s, after he he finished purchasing a bunch of companies and building Teledyne, he repurchased 90 percent of Teledyne's outstanding common stock. And he did it at cheap prices. And that was the way that he achieved those phenomenal returns. And you go back through all those other CEOs that Thorndike talks about, and it's the same exact story. So the takeaway from Thorndike's, Thorndike's book is this. There are two types of great CEOs, talking very generally. The first are those operating CEOs who are just phenomenal at running their businesses. The second are those CEOs who are phenomenal capital allocators, like Henry Singleton, like Warren Buffett. And it is generally the latter category that produces the largest compound annual growth over an extended period relative to the former. All right. Thank you very much. I think it's my turn. Um, I think I might have one of the oldest books out of the four of us. I am doing um, Benjamin Graham's The Intelligent Investor, which was originally published in 1949, but I actually prefer the version with Jason Zweig's notes. Um, it's just, it provides a lot of extra insight. Um, Benjamin Graham, if you haven't heard of him, was the granddaddy of value investing. Um, he greatly influenced Warren Buffett. If that's not a, a compliment, I don't know what it is. <laughs> um, and it's something the the things that you read in his book are things that you hear from the Motley Fool all the time, right? And invest in companies for the long term because um, you believe in them. Buy companies that you've done your homework on because the market's going to take wild swings, and the companies that are really going to last are the ones that will really last. I know that sounds circular, but it's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, I this this book I I read really quickly, and then I went back and read it again very slowly. It's a very long book, but it's definitely worth your time. Um, I think that I'm going to turn it over to Robert Brokamp now, because he looks so ready to talk. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, my recommendation is Stocks for the Long Run by Jeremy Siegel. Jeremy Siegel is a professor at Wharton Business School at the University of Pennsylvania. And when you look at it, it does have a certain textbook look to it. Um, the fourth edition on the front cover. Is right, a right, exactly. And actually, and there's a fifth edition that just came out a year ago. Um, but what's great about this book is it is not just an investing book. It's a history book. It's an economics book. There is sort of a textbooky feel to it. But Jeremy Single writes in, in a way that the average person can understand some of these contexts. He goes back to the returns of various asset classes back all the way to 1802, and then it comes all the way through the big events, the Great Depression, the wars, and the recent edition as even includes the Great Recession. And the, the main point of all of this is that over the long run, stocks are actually the least risky asset class because one of the big um, risks we all have when we're trying to accomplish our financial goals is, are we going to have enough money? And is the money we does the money we have is going to keep up with inflation? In the short term, year to year, you don't know what's going to happen. But over the long run, historically, stocks have beaten cash, beaten bonds, beaten real estate, and beaten inflation. So um, I think part of this book is just inspiration, especially during the times when the market is down, to look at this and say, over the last two hundred years, if you can just hold on through even parts like the Great. Depression, where stocks went down 90%, even those who held on and still added a little bit to their portfolios over the coming years, made out much better than in any other asset class. So, um, and actually, I first did, learned this as an audiobook. So, I highly recommend those, <laughs> especially of you busy parents um, who are spending a lot of time in the car driving your kids around, get it as an audiobook. It's a great way to get it in snippets so you're not getting overwhelmed by all the information. But I think it'll convince you to be a long-time stock investor. Excellent. OK, MD, you're up, Slugger. All right, got to got got pull up on this. Fill. <laughs> with, with only but so many vocalized pauses. All right, let's see how I do. So uh, for me, it's 
uh, a book by Howard Marks called The Most Important Thing. Um, Marks is a big value investor, uh, despite the fact that his name kind of sounds like Karl Marx. And even as a growth investor, <laughs> it's spelled I, differently, by the <laughs> way. Right, right. It's and not with a Russian or German accent. <laughs> right. um, but even as a growth investor personally, I found that it influenced me a great deal. Um, and, and there are two particular points I'd like to draw out from the book. One is that he talks a lot about uh, the inherent cyclicality of the market. So you will have uh, bull markets where people become convinced that things are always going to go up, and you will have bear markets where people become convinced that things are always going to go down. And they inevitably feed into each other uh, because a handful of people then realize, well, it's not always going to go down. And a few people you know, on the flip side realize it's not always going to go up. Um, and, and so I, I would encourage people, whenever you hear, oh, this is the new reality, uh, be skeptical. Uh, because often that is actually um, what Marx refers to as the third phase of the market, whichever it is, bull or bear. Um, so that's something to consider when, when, when people say, oh, oil prices are always going to be at you know, $5 a barrel, or, or tech stocks are always going to be amazing. You know, that's maybe a time to, to get a little bit skeptical about that long-term thesis. Um, the second piece is uh, he talks about three words that are the most beautiful words um, in the world if you're on the other side of the transaction. I'm quoting directly from page 114. And those words are, regardless of price. Uh, and this is one of the reasons that so many mutual funds underperform the market, is because um, their investors will pull out when they begin to underperform their benchmark or their index or the S&P 500, or when they just go down. And that then forces them to sell assets at any price. They must sell those assets right then. And if you're on the other side of that trade, that's a nice opportunity for you. And um, and that also, you know, explains why you've got these really brilliant minds who consistently, nonetheless, underperform their benchmarks. And that's often because um, the the fear of their um, the fear of the market is magnified by all the people then pulling their money out of that mutual fund. So, two two thoughts for you from the most important thing. Um, I actually did a survey of the investors at the Motley Fool, the analyst advisor, and sent an email and said, "Send me your favorite investing books." And this book was actually among the top five. So oh, you are true. you are in it, good company. Oh, good, good to know. <laughs> um, I guess if anyone is curious, the top ones for that were I have it right here. The Little Book That Builds Wealth by Pat Dorsey, One Up on Wall Street by Peter Lynch, The Warren Buffett Way by Robert Hagstrom, The Most Important Thing and Common Sense for the Thoughtful Investor by Howard Marks, and The Essays of Warren Buffett, Lessons for Corporate America by Warren Buffett, compiled by Lawrence Cunningham. Um, there's a whole bunch more. And if you're really interested, if you actually email me at the show, because I would love to get an email. No one has emailed me yet. Industry focus at fool.com. I will send you the fool list, the full list. The, the fool list the to see what you did there. Yeah. Yes, there you go. Nice. <laughs> All right. Even the secret ones that you haven't disclosed yet? Even secret ones I haven't disclosed yet. Um, I also just want to plug a highly accessible book, Personal Finance for Dummies. Um, I know this sounds like a joke, but it's not. I've read it. Mr. Brokamp has read it. And as we discussed a couple of weeks ago, the majority of, Ameri of Americans apparently need to read it. Um, John Maxfield, again, shout out for being able to successfully complete that financial literacy quiz that I sprung on you a couple weeks ago. Um, anyway, so I hope we made your gift giving a little bit easier this year. Books are always a great pe present, especially if you get to learn from them. Um, after all, as my very imposing immigrant father would say, education is the gift that lasts forever and that no one can take away from you. <laughs> that was good. I don't know your father, but I think that was a good impression. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a, I do, and it was. <laughs> he's a very serious man, my father. Uh, very, very kind, though. Um, but, I mean, he might be serious because people are taking his gifts away. I don't really know. Um, I don't think we mentioned any stocks, but if we did, People may or may not have an interest in them, so don't buy or sell based solely on what you hear. Like I said, please email us at the show if you have any questions, thoughts, or want the full list. Uh, thank you guys very much for joining us today, and I hope everyone has a great week.